Welcome everyone. Today we have a Wilson Lord of Mayhem build guide. In this build guide, we'll be looking at the melee class and we'll go through the thoughts of talents and also attributes for this build. After hours of fiddling around during the server off time using the different save file, and I was able to test a few things. I was able to test the perks, I was able to test the different skills combination, and also to test what happens when we get to level 60 with a particular build. So keep in mind, although this account is level 90, which I downloaded the save file, this talent train and everything is added to level 60. So I have not added additional points on top of level 60, pretty much. I'm gonna have a demonstration on the build. Here we have this build. Basically, when we're quitting, you can see that we hit actually very hard. When my rage is over 750, I hit over 7, 170k. And if you look at the HP of the monsters at this rate, they don't have that much HP, <laughs> they're like 2000. But because they're level 40 monsters, I have not been grinding upwards, but the same logic applies, basically. You can jump, you can scream, you can one-shot everything. And notice that right at this moment, I don't have to debuff enemies. I can debuff him. And when I've said debuff is you can see that under him, there's a debuff. So basically under him, there's a purple debuff. And when he's debuffed like this, and if I get my damage on him, if he does survive for 1.5 seconds, I should deal double damage to him again. This is pretty big for us because late game in the bosses, they have over one to two million HP. And just by shooting one debuff onto them, they take double damage from you. And this hits very hard. So notice there's units that actually have a little purple sign under them. This one is debuff. At this rate of the fights, I don't need to use the debuff because, well, they die to one shot regardless if you debuff or not. But late game, this is tailored towards late game. If you face enemies which have seen like 2 million HP, you debuff them, you just start hitting them. And the biggest source of, you know, fun about this build is it's pretty simple. You don't have to do much. You just consider debuff if you want. Sometimes your hook actually kills them because you quit for so hard. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, if you want a simple build that doesn't require much of the investment into the gears or any uniques, this is great. You just need critical hit damage, critical hit chances to guarantee you get the crits, and this crit will be multiplied because your rage is over 750. <clears throat> and yeah, here we are. Six, 160k, you know. 170k, 150k, it, the damage will vary because, let me show you why it varies. The damage is varying because the great sword here we have is 330 to 475. Because the base damage changes, that's why our damage is also being very volatile. Doesn't matter though, if you one shot them, well they die to one shot. And you might be saying, yes, the difficulty is a little low, but wouldn't you have trouble in high difficulty? I assume I would have difficulty in high difficulty, not in terms of lacking damage, because I don't think monsters will get that much HP that quickly. So what I think the difficulty is being defensive. We might get killed by monsters before we can kill them. So what I do recommend is prioritize your gears in terms of critical hit damage, critical hit chances, followed by damage and you know material damage. Followed by that, you do want to also balance it with the resistance with HP. Because we have lots of HP perks with a percentage of HP, having more HP definitely helps over the spell shield or the force shield. So yeah, let's see, look into the talents, let's look into the trees, and let's see how we go. So after looking at the demonstration of the gameplay, what I realized is instead of me touching on every basic part of this build, what I can do is I can share the save file with you guys onto my Discord. If you download the save file, and I'll show you guys how to put the save file into your offline account, you can actually load my particular build. And by loading this build, you can see everything I have. And keep in mind, all the items I basically only found one while I was fighting. Everything else, I basically just bought them from the shop. So nothing too special. And the only biggest part is the weapon, which I showed you guys how to roll in the later part of this video. So how do you load a save file, which is offline? So how do we save and load one of those offline save files? What you can do is you can download this file from our Discord. And after downloading it, what you can do is you can copy paste this file. Let's say we copy paste this one. You can go into your PC, go into the local disk and next part, go to users. After users, go to user again. And after that, go to my save files and find Wilson. After finding Wilson, go to save games. After finding save games, go to characters. What you can do is you can paste that in. Here I have named this file Majestic Multigaming, which is, is our YouTube channel as well. And by going to it, what you can do is you can just copy paste the file you want to copy paste 
and this actual file will appear into your save file for your offline account. And what this allows you to do is, let me show you guys the whole process. After that, you can exit the game. By exiting the game and coming back to the game again, what you can see is within your save file, within your offline save file that is, yeah, currently the online is not working for us. So within the offline save file, you can see the number of the characters you have on the offline save file. What you should be able to see is Maj Majestic Multigaming, the save file you just pasted into. And by loading it, you have everything basically I have tested and built it onto this character. The biggest factors are two things. One is what did I pick for the skill perks? The second one is what did I pick for the skill tree? And I'll explain the reasons to all the details. Why did I pick those skills and why did I go for the skill tree? Itemization, well, I touched on it, but nothing too special. It's critical hit damage, critical hit chances, and also, you know, material damage, physical damage, and survivability. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the save file. What I do for the future is I have a mage build that's coming as well. So we'll look in the mage build, we'll do the same, we'll share the save files, and I'll explain everything, but you can look into the save files and just, you know, follow the build by looking at everything that's given to you. Thank you guys. So at the start, we'll be going to Ferocity. So I maximized Ferocity here, all the points went to Ferocity. The armor itself will give me toughness, agility, and wisdom. So here we can see this maximizes <coughs> Sorry, this maximizes our damage. For each point of ferocity we add, we'll actually get 0.5 of the damage. And for other points, we'll get 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and respectively, depending on which one's the highest. So the point system is quite standard, ferocity goes there. And the biggest factor here are the skills and the talent tree. Let's get into the skills first, then we'll go through the talents. So Firstly, we're assuming that we have gotten to level 47, which is where most of the spells here are unlocked. The first one we have is so Winds of Asher, and basically we use this as utility. What we're looking for is we're looking for the buffs that we gain by moving, and we're looking for a bit of the rage gain. And initially, you know, we can get the flight speed because this is optional. We got a buff for each enemy hit. We got the chance to inflict, uh, inflict alignments because we do want to inflict a particular alignment, which is called status. And after that, we want the damage deal to yourself after landing, which is pretty good. And we will get force shield when we land, something that helps us regenerate. And lastly, the shockwave is not any, that important, but you know, there isn't anything particular for us to go for. We are not likely to kill enemies by jumping in. And what we're going to do is we can try to use the skill cooldown with the stamina. I think that's also viable. So it depends if you like rolling or not. If you, want to, if you don't need to save your rolling, you can try to use stamina for this, which is not bad. We can try this as well. So this is just a mobility and also a rage gaining spell, which is at 100 rage gaining. The second spell we have is going to be a very nice buff. It's a solving shot. What this does is it gives us movement speed. It gives us the increased buff for everything, it gives us resistance score, it will give us the increased duration, it has the critical chance score, which is very important for us. We go for all crit and critical damage build. This also regenerates rage because we need lots of rage. Lastly, this has the chance of shouting and giving enemy alignments. Here the alignments is weakness, which increases the damage taken by the enemies. So you can see we have two utility rage gaining spell. After that, we have the tracker switch. The Tracker's Reach here is a pretty interesting spell, which we'll touch after, well, which we'll touch right into after we saw that. <laughs> Sorry, which we'll touch now. We well, might as well touch it now. So, Tracker's Reach. Why do I have Tracker's Reach? For entirely the purpose of getting status effect. Because I want the status effect which allows me to debuff enemies, which slows them. But on top of that, my talent tree will have talents which increase damage dealt to enemies under the status effect. I was looking around for a talent that give us status effect, and this happened to be one of the strongest. Why is that? Because it's 100% giving the enemy debuff, and also the duration is 4 seconds. After 1.5 seconds, we deal 100% damage again onto the enemy that was dealt damage by us whoever has the status effect we'll go through the talent tree so this is the biggest factor everything else just lowers cooldown increase rage and lowers more cooldown and once we get into the talent tree you can see that with the status alignment we can potentially do double damage with our existing damage which is quite high already with juggernaut i do prefer a survivability spell 
And for the Juggernaut, we'll be going for Shield Absorption. We get a bit of the you know, increased block chance. We get lower cooldown, lower rage. And here we have reduced damage from projectiles. We have increased damage absorption. We get the, you know, this is just something bonus. Don't really need this one because it's for damage. And lastly, we increase rage when we take damage. So basically, Juggernaut is a defensive spell. It can gain a bit of rage, but mostly it's just here to protect us from getting one-shotted. Lastly, this is our main source of range spender, and I've been comparing Bleeding Edge with the spell I really like, which is the Blade Master spell, the Blade Storm. The downside with Blade Storm is it's about a third of the damage compared to the damage from Bleeding Edge, which is not great, because Bleeding Edge have so many perks that give us massive damage. So here we want critical damage and also critical chance. Those are the biggest factors. After that, we get weapon damage, weapon damage, lower reach cost, because the higher reach we are, the more damage we do from the skill talent. Additional one second is actually better than additional four seconds. Not only that you lose damage, but you also cost 300 extra rage, so it's not that worth it. And on top of that, we can get a bit of life glitch. It's optional for this one. You can adjust a little bit. If you don't need the tank ability, you can go for something else. But I do like the sustain, because likely I'll be using both of my rage potions. I won't be using any health potions. Because I feel health potions are a little slow, but I can keep one. I'm keeping one for now. So, <clears throat> now that we went through the skills, why do I pick those skills and how does this help us? Our build is focused on critical hit damage. The critical hit damage will come from a few sources. One of the sources will definitely be the gears. The second source will be the perks. One of the biggest perks we'll be looking into is Merciless Lethality, which is a second round of, second round of the tree within the second round of trick within the green section. This gives us 100% critical hit damage, but minus 30% damage. So initially thinking about it, I calculated the maths. I was like, if they're multiplying, we actually lose damage. But turns out we multiply with critical hit damage. So this 100% doubles your damage. But that's if you quit, but we'll be having lots of quit damage. This minus 30% is addition. So what that means is if you look into the talent tree here, you'll see that we have 432%. By losing 30%, we'll only lose 30% of the 432. So we'll actually come back to 400. So we don't lose that much damage. And I have tested by adding the perk and double checking the skills here with different with the different talents, which actually give us damage. So by testing how much damage give us. So in return, you do want massive amount of boost in critical hit damage because this is multiplied by your existing damage. After that, I curved this way because I want a bit of survivability, you know, maximum health, which would be useful in a late game to not get one-shotted. Damage-wise, you know, 8% damage is very minimum. I just need to get there. And I can try to twist it, but currently my setup is aimed into a few varieties, and this actually provided with me the most efficiency adding of the skills at level 60. So notice here we have 30 points remaining. This is a 90 level account, and 30 points remaining means level 60, you have this complete build. So I'm assuming it's going to get very hard leveling, which my friend did tell me in the end game, it gets really difficult. So by level 60, you have everything and you can build forwards. You can consider getting the blocks. You can consider getting the debuff with blocks or more additional HP or go for more damage. So we'll look at the big perks and I'll explain some of my thoughts. This is a pretty big perk. This gives us the critical chances and also this gives us critical damage as we go through this side. So I do go for offense instead of the defense because the high critical chance and high critical damage is the bread and butter of this build. So after that, this one's optional. If you do plan to go into the physical hit into rent damage, it's because I will be bleeding enemies with my spell. Once I'm my spell, I mean my bleeding edge, which you know the name states will be bleeding enemies. The bleeding chances is about 8.2%, but we do use it quite often. So what I'm hoping for is when we do bleed enemies, we life leech onto the bleeding target. That's for the boss fights. Usually minion fights, we one shot them. So this side is optional, but everything else is quite interesting. So right away, when I'm leveling up, what I do is I take the red path. I don't take the green path right away. So I'm taking the red path directly into this side. So why this side? And before I even take this side, what I usually do is this is for purely for leveling, by the way. So I'll show you guys. So what I do is I start leveling with level one. I get this perk if I want some damage. I directly goes here. So this is the first 
big scope per account unlock. And this is the Furious Appetite. This will stop your rage degeneration. Your willpower generation goes into rage, so any armor that gives you willpower regeneration will give you additional rage every second. And lastly, why this is so good is that you will be sitting on 1000 rage at the standard level, and each spell you cast, or each skills you cast, not spells, there's a difference. Skills consider everything you cast, spells is only for mages, while attack is for warrior spells. So, yeah, it's a mix. It's a use of words. So the skills you cast here will do double damage. So what that means is I can cast, well, I only have one damage spell pretty much. I can cast Bleeding Edge here. If my rage is over 750, I'm actually doing double damage on top of every multiplier. So if I'm doing 100 damage here and I quit for 400, I do 800 because I spent resources over 750. So this is a massive boost to damage and I usually go directly for it. After that, I might consider getting some survivability. I might not. At this moment, I think I went for survivability just because, you know, I don't want to die too much in the game. But at this point, after getting this perk, I'm happy to go to this perk for the Merciless Desert. We spoke about the critical hit damage, which is massive. And if I want survivability, I just perk on the side because those little knots, the attack damage and melee weapon damage are pretty much the same for me. Attack is for the attack spells and melee, like melee weapons. So we're going to perk into this side. And the biggest perk we're going to look at is Branded Bust. This is the defensive spells we have for this build. So every 2.5 seconds, you get a point called Tenet. Each Tenet, you get 15% damage reduction, and that's for one hit. Any spell hit, any unit that hits you, and this disappears after you get hit it. So you lose one, one Tenet each time you get attacked, or each time a spell hits you. But you're looking at 75 damage protection on the first hit and 50... Actually, it's 50, 60% on the second hit. But if you get this perk, everything goes to 20 for each of the tenants. So you look at 100% damage reduction on the first hit, 80% on the second one, and this goes down to about you know, 40, 60, no, 60, 40, 20, and 0 after you're getting hit five times in a row. But if you run around and if you don't get hit, you start to build up your resistance again. So this is not bad. I think this can definitely protect us, especially with very high bursty. So I usually go for the Furious Appetite, and then I can consider the Merciless. After that, we can consider Defensive with Branded. After that, if I want more damage, I'm fighting a lot of rare monsters. Headhunters is okay, but keep in mind, it's not that worth it if I'm just getting the 15% material damage, which is not a big factor, because we want critical damage, we want critical changes. So this is optional because I was building this one for the late game and I was going for killing a lot of rare monsters, this was worth it. So I was getting at least 2 to 3 stacks minimum. And this gave us you know, 30 or 45% more material damage. And the last pack just gave us 50 seconds before this settles off. So each time you kill a rare monster, in 30 seconds if you kill one more, you get more stack. Each kills you get, you get 15 material percent damage which is by no means a massive boost. It's like a mediocre boost, but what's great is you can keep killing them and up to five stacks. So you look at 75% material damage. After that, because I have curved onto those two, the next thing I want to show you guys is this particular perk. And this is going to be one of the cornerstones for the build. This is when we actually have the debuff called the status. So when enemies under the debuff with status, you will inflict additional 100% more damage after 1.5 second delay. So the status buff we have is a 4 second debuff that slows enemies. To show you the status buff, let's have a look here. We can go to status buff here, which is under the category of status alignment. I probably didn't pronounce it right, right? Yeah, status. The status chance score and status effect is basically a debuff that slows enemy attacks and movement, and this can stack with, you know, depending on your numbers. And this is normally not achievable by the warrior class for two reasons. One of the reasons is most spells have a default effect to debuff enemies with stasis, but as a warrior, we either have to use a staff or catalyst to use those spells, especially the blink, which automatically apply a status onto enemy when we have the perk. But I don't really want to lose my massive damage with my two-hand weapon, which I touch on at the end of the build. So because of that, I'm looking for a spell that debuff enemies at a certain chance with status. And here, this is a spell. This is Tracker's Touch, and by picking this perk, 100% chance of applying. Keep in mind, if you pick the multiple hit, 
So pulse enemy for all directions. Those pulls actually don't debuff the enemy. The only thing that debuffs the enemy is the single target slash they use. Yeah, this is why. This one, when you hook onto the enemy, they will be debuffed as they drag towards you. Now, one thing to notice for this particular one is I'm actually picking the 40% weapon damage, not because I want to deal damage, but rather I need to deal damage to the boss monsters because they can't be poured into me. And if they can't be poured into me, the debuff won't exist, I won't go onto them. So you have to damage them to actually debuff them. And once they have the status debuff, within the 4 seconds, you deal damage to them, and this should be doubled in 1.5 seconds, and this deals again because of your perk. So this gets a little advanced into the later stage of the builds, but this is definitely worth it for more damage. And on top of that, damage dealt after the delay is increased by 20%. So basically, after 1.5 seconds, you deal more damage onto the boss once you debuff them. After getting this perk, what you want to do is, you may be thinking, hey, is there another way I can debuff enemy with stasis? Well, there is one. So what you can do is, you can come to this side for the grievous afflictions. So what this allows you to do is allows you to debuff enemy with another type of alignment. With the warrior class, most of our weapon is actually going to give us either bleeding, poison, or rend. Those are the most common ones for the two-handed and one-handed weapon. And because of that, we will actually not debuff enemies with stasis. They will debuff enemy with bleed or maybe poison. And what we can do is we can find a weapon depending on what weapon it is. You can get any weapon you like, and if it's a good one, you know, definitely go and socket it. So what I'm gonna do is actually oh I can use this one to socket, right? Now use this one to show you guys. So what you can do is you come to the jeweler, you put in your socket weapon, or you put in a weapon that's not socketed, you can reroll the sockets. You can reroll at any time, and this goes from anywhere from one to three. And if you reroll the sockets, and if you get what sockets you want, you can stop and you can take it out. You can start socketing gems. By socketing gems, you actually give your weapon an attribute attack. Here I'm giving my weapon the other damage. What other allows me to do is it allows me to normal attack and with all my skill attacks to debuff enemies with status. So let's have a look at other. So other is the Oconal damage, and other damage is a natural chance of inflicting status onto enemy. So what this provides is, if you look into my bleeding edge, now I have two alignments that's debuffing enemies. One is the bleeding default because this spell and my particular perk add a lot of bleeding damage. So if you look here, I have lots of rent damage. And this definitely will start bleeding enemies. And if I bleed enemies, I can heal off them by hitting them because they're bleeding with my perk. Second to that, I was able to unlock another alignment with the skill tree. By having the second chance of hitting enemies with status at 7.8% with the added damage, I can also debuff enemies just by spinning my spells on them with the chances, which is not bad. And initially I didn't have a source to stabilizing the debuffs with adder, so I actually went to gem my weapon, so it guarantees I have a chance to debuff enemies before I found the tracker switch. Now how does the debuff work? Because here we have damage, we have multiple sorts of damage, so the debuff works with everything adds up to your weapon damage, which actually goes back into your spell damage, or by here is the attack spell damage. The debuff works by looking at the highest rates of your damage type. If my highest rate is rend, all my spells or all my attacks would deal rend additional alignment. Because of the perk, my second highest damage, which is adder, will also be aligned onto the spells. So here I can debuff enemy with rend and also add the damage. Let's go back to the skill tree. Now that we can debuff enemy twice, I also went for this one. You necessarily don't have to get this one, and 18% increased chance does not increase that by awfully a lot. I think it goes from 6% to 7.2% or something. So if you're shorting on points, maybe just get this one is enough. And after that, basically you have a chance of debuffing enemies with your source of damage, and you have another chance of debuff enemies just with by hitting them with your spell, this one. Lastly, what I want to do now is I want to increase my rage because we know that we do 100% more damage when my rage is over 750. The best chance to increase rage is actually look for some perks that gives you more rage. And here, this particular perk, Duty of Determination, gives us 200 and followed by 100 and 100 rage, which is a very good spend. There's another one over here for 150 maximum rage, which is not bad. I might look towards getting that. 
because the higher range I have, the more damage I do. If I guarantee myself it's over 750, I do double damage. And that's a big factor for me. So I'm going to perk, instead of going down the path, which takes 10 perks to get there, I'm going to go from the top side towards this side. The benefit of doing this is I have potentially to unlock this perk if I want them, which those are optional. So the biggest benefit is that because that is enemies are slowed. And if enemies are slowed, I do 25% more damage to them while I was going for those perks. So I'll be going here. It takes seven perks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, one. Oh, no. I don't have this one. So if I don't pick this one, it will take seven knots to complete this. If I take this one, it will take eight. So here I have 400 additional rage. And if you look at my rage, it's for 1,400. Lastly, Yes, I mentioned about next part. If I needed more rage, I can go for more rage and one power by going for the basic perks. Keep in mind, four shield and alignment resistance scores are okay. Cooldown is not bad, so we can go with this part. Take three points to get another 150. I think I might go for that once I level over 60. And lastly, I am getting a lot of rage. And if I pick this particular spell, 2% per 100 unspent rage, then I'm looking at, you know, at least 20% or maybe even more than 20% by having over 1000 range. So this whole build goes around the critical hit damage, critical hit chances by having range higher than 750 and by debuffing enemies. Let's look into items of choice. Basically you're looking for increased damage, you're looking for material damage, but those are the secondary spells. What you're really looking for is the critical hit chances and here we're looking at the critical hit chances score and here we're looking at anything that gives me critical hit chances. So basically having this ring and not having this basic ring is a big factor. This steel ring gives 22% critical hit damage. And if you take this ring off, you can see that my average damage actually went down by about 300. So that's pretty su substantial for a simple ring. I did not use my super powerful ring here because those rings came from, from the save file and those rings are not good for testing. I'll show you guys the ring, it's a little broken. So I'm not using those rings for testing, but those do hit very hard. In terms of weapon of choice, you do want a two-hand weapon for the highest source of damage because we don't need attack speed. This also gives us you know, higher lifesteal. For the weapon, you do want to socket them with the gems of attack damage in order to have another chance of debuffing enemies. And on top of that, one small trick I want to share with you guys is that when you socket the weapon gems, you want to socket flat damage. It's a massive boost of damage if you socket the flat damage. Here, all my gems have flat damage. Now, how do I get all the gems with flat damage? Is that when you go to the vendor, I'll show you guys. When you go to the vendor, you put putting a weapon in. You can start rolling for sockets. Notice you can roll for anywhere from one to three. Basically, offensive one is for the physical attackers to get the flat damage. Offensive two is for the magical attackers to get flat spell damage, which is very crucial for magical players. And lastly, offensive three is for a bit of the critical chances and a bit of the utility. So if we go to one of the gems, you can see offensive three gives alignment damage. This one gives duration curse. This one gives duration. This one gives duration. So offensive three, I don't recommend that. I really recommend offensive one for the warrior class. The physical damage it does offensive two so three offensive two for the mage class i was very lucky to roll three offensive one on one weapon i know it's a small chance but if you get it because it doesn't cost that much to roll in the late game i think it costs about 900 to roll right yeah 900 to roll once i spend about oh yeah this is to remove jam this is to oh let's get my weapon here so i'll put it here i spend about maybe 20 30k to roll into this but that was a little lucky so if you get three of those offensive gems, your damage goes up by so much higher. My full set of gears, I basically bought them from the shop. And because I bought you know, all the level 60 gears, it's pretty much a level 60 build. 